What's good, YouTube? So, uh, recently, Matt Easton talked about a particularly bad Sabre video he saw, and I thought I'd do a proper response to the video he was talking about. I managed to find it, and the dickheads decided to disable comments and disable ratings, and when you're talking about uh, you know, giving people skills they need to uh, potentially save their lives, that really isn't fucking cool. You really shouldn't be uh, trying to... Uh, Silence criticism. So yeah, normally I'd have left a I'd have just left a comment, but I'm doing a video response because uh, you're trying to silence your critics. And before you try and flag this video or DMCA it, uh, yeah, fair use, motherfucker. So uh, you try that shit, and I'm going to be fucking coming after you. All right. Uh, <laughs> if you want to actually try and deal with this like a man, either do a video response yourself, or perhaps we can settle it the old-fashioned way. Uh, also, the original video was uh, over 40 minutes long, uh, so I've done my best to try and condense this and make it, sh as, make it as short as possible, but I do apologise, this video uh, probably is going to be rather long. So, let's get on with it. Um, earlier today I was on a forum and saw some people talking about the Shashka, which is the Cossack Sabre. And they were talking about it and they were asking about videos and what all is out there. And I decided that I want to make a video on it because it's one of my favorite weapons of all time and wanted to teach it from the Promek way. Now, as you know, we've moved away from Russian martial arts. We do our own thing, but building on what I was taught and then going forward from there. So basically, he's just making it up as he goes along. And the funny thing about it is, is that it, it started with the Cossacks and the Russians, but you see it throughout many former Soviet Union militaries all around the world. So this is very important, so he's actually talking about the weapon as a military device, something which you can use to kill with, something which you can use to defend yourself with, and that's what makes this video open for criticism. If he was simply talking about uh, sword dancing, which most of the Shashko and Cossack stuff I've seen tends to be, I'd have no problem with what he's doing, but when he's talking about using it as an implement to defend yourself with, that's a completely different story. It is a great, great, great weapon. One of my favorites. I want to show you some of the things about it. But what we're going to do is we're going to do it the Promic way. We're going to do the theory, then we're going to do the movement, and then we're going to do the application where I'm going to call in one of my students, Val, to help me out with it. So a theory is a hypothesis which has actually stood up to testing, and what you're teaching fails. It's not even a hypothesis anymore by this point. It's just bullshit and then you'll actually see me begin to use it in combat. Spoiler alert, so yeah, we don't actually see it in combat, we see it in ultra slow motion, and he still manages to fuck it up. So this is just kind of a quick and dirty video. 40 fucking minutes. When you take something like Spanish steel, or you take a high quality grade um, type of steel blade, if you beat them against each other, it will actually shatter them. Oh, what the fuck? Do I even need to respond to that? It's so stupid, like, I'm, I'm losing the ability to fucking speak. I'm stuttering like a fucking idiot because my brain has just given out on me. I've lost all faith in humanity from that one comment. Jesus Christ. I really hope this is just some elaborate, uh, very dedicated troll because uh, I... If this is the standard of, uh, you know, martial arts instructors out there, w wow, just wow. Uh, okay, so, calm down, James. No, good quality steel sword isn't going to break on contact. Look, here we go, good quality steel. Okay, it's fine. Still perfectly straight. Hasn't shattered. Uh, no, good quality steel swords are going are meant to take abuse. If a sword breaks, that shit quality steel. If it breaks from a little a little bit of a light contact. I, that's like what you just said is like someone saying, Oh no, yeah, good quality car is meant to break down as soon as you leave the showroom. That's a mark of a good quality car that is. Fucking hell. Uh, moving on. Let's go. And we'll go ahead and bring it out. It's single-bladed, it's not double-bladed, so... Edged, not bladed. 
But one of the things that most people don't know is that it's actually a spear and a throwing weapon. As you can see back here, I don't know if you got this correct, there's a little inlet for your finger. And generally the way that you can tell people that have been trained on a shot spear or not is if they are able to tell you this, is that as you're swinging the weapon around, you bring it up into your finger and you actually use it as a spear for dismounting. So you may be slashing up and over the head of a horse like this, find a target, transition your hand, and spear into them. Okay, I'm going to have to ask for a source for that because that smells like real bullshit. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of good reasons to never throw a sword. Firstly, even if it's one-on-one, -on -one, if you throw your sword and it doesn't kill the opponent, you're pretty much guaranteed to die at that point. And on a battlefield where there's going to be more than one opponent, yeah, throwing your weapon is a throwing a sword is a really really bad idea. Uh, secondly, swords are really fucking expensive. Throwing weapons are generally designed to be cheap and disposable because you're throwing them away literally. And finally, uh, javelins and spears and arrows and that kind of thing they're deadly straight. If a sword was designed for throwing, it would be deadly straight also. We, we decided to do this for free. So you normally charge for your bullshit? Fucking hell. Uh, you should be paying me to watch this, it's so bad. So the theory that we're going to mainly use on this is a pendulum and a point of rotation. And the first thing that we want to look at, and like I said, this is not in depth, this is very basic. Is Okay, at this point, wife Beta McGee spends about 10 minutes explaining how a pendulum works and how to use that to uh, get momentum and points of rotation to change the direction of the blade. It's only 10 minutes, uh, but it's the longest, it was the longest 10 minutes of my life, so I'm cutting out as much as I possibly can. He repeats himself like a billion times on every point he says. I'm just going to leave in a couple of lousy little bits which are worth responding to. That you have a pendulum pointing down gravity is acting down on this at all times okay so as this pendulum moves up with Occam's razor and so forth Occam's razor has nothing to do with this you're not even in the right field of study come on this is physics for eight-year-olds and you're still screwing it up you have no clue what you're talking about I'm really sorry guys, I really am. I'm trying to make this video as quick as possible, but if I was to comment on everything this guy screwed up, the video would be about 10 hours long. It really is just unbelievably bad. It's still going to try to come back to center, where all the weight is settled around this point of rotation. <laughs> so, we'll do the same thing with our shotgun, center mass, again, just like a pendulum. Absolutely no difference, okay? So, where does that leave us? We have to figure out how to make it move. So once it comes up here, to a three-dimensional environment, it's going to hit a point of contact somewhere. That point of contact is going to be rotation. It's going to hit a point of rotation. Right now, it's moving around. And when we're moving it, we're moving through first, second, and third levers. We're moving through all lever classes. That pendulum is three-dimensional. It can move any way it can, just like I showed you a second ago. So we're going to contact it and create points of rotation, alternate points of rotation, and move it around this fixed point. This is a fixed, open structure. It's not a closed structure. It's not closed. It's fixed and open. It's towards the palm of my hand on the ridge on the back. I'm going to begin to Jesus Christ, this guy's had no... Has this guy had no training as an instructor whatsoever? You don't need to switch between a sword and a stick and a piece of paper and talk about 2D and 3D and back to the stick and back to the sword. Just stick with the sword, you can explain it all there. Pendulum, point of rotation, simple, done. Uh, anyone who's old enough to hold a sword without adult supervision knows how a pendulum works. Jesus Christ. Now you'll notice different things that you can do. If you continually use this movement around rotations and pendulums, pendulum, point of rotation, can't go any further. Okay, if you will constantly use that, you'll begin to create your own. Now I'm all for people um, innovating and coming up with uh, techniques but you have to test those techniques in hard sparring to actually know whether or not they're going to be effective because inevitably 
you've just made some shit up. There's going to be something which you've overlooked. You seem to be just advising people to just go, right, pendulum, point of rotation. No, just make shit up as you go along and everything's good. And no, most people actually need some level of guidance. Most people don't know what's going to be uh, martially sound. And advising beginners to just make shit up like that as they go along, I really don't think that's good advice, mate. Thumbs up. I'm bringing it around, okay? I'm going to use this movement all the way up into my shoulders up here. And this applies to almost any sword work. No, it absolutely doesn't. Down onto it. So I can bring it back and parry or whatever. So, say we're moving it, I bring it up. I'm going to start using this almost like an axe around. I get that you're trying to apply some sort of universal principles to fighting, so a sword is an axe, as a spear is hand to hand. And I get that, there's times when that's actually pretty useful. There are lots of principles which apply to all aspects of fighting. But the differences between the weapons actually matter a lot as well. Uh, now, there are techniques where you grab the sword with two hands, so you can get extra force when you're thrusting. That's called half swording. It's very, very good against armoured opponents. Having the hand like that to have a little bit more uh, control, however, isn't going to give you any more power, and you're <laughs> just going to end up with this hand cut off very, very quickly. The reason you might use a spear or a, um, or a quarter staff or a, or a great sword with two hands and get all that extra leverage is that by having that extra leverage, you can have a weapon which is designed to have a lot more range. You know, with a, with a spear or a quarter staff, you could have another six foot out in front or even more sometimes. With a sword, you're limiting that. You've got 18 inches there, possibly even less. So, yeah. Really not a good idea. Two body parts. Go ahead and put it up here. Use this as your point of rotation. Right there. Or up here, depending on what you want to accomplish. If you want to accomplish a very quick, fast movement, you're going to rotate it off of there. If you want a more crushing movement, you're going to focus it up there. The reason is, is that the length of the lever determines the amount of strength that you're going to use. So if you want to use it off your body, right there, then you can move it over here and push it off of there. You can bring it off of there, back to here, and move it back over there, back over here, and move it. You can bring it up here to your and move it off. He's using it like a one-armed man trying to swing a sledgehammer completely unnecessary. It's a one-handed weapon. It's designed to be nice and agile in one hand. There. If you get stuck in a movement, take it over with your other hand and then move off of it. A lot of people, they just go, man, look at me. I'm moving my sword and it's crazy. But what you want to do is you want to be able to switch. And when you're able to switch, it's just like being able to box and punch. When you're able to switch, you're able to change your angle of attack and your tactics and your strategy against your enemy. So if you're here and you're working, being able to switch your movement in this area gives you an advantage that he may not see, especially in the speed of combat. <laughs> I can tell I've had far more experience uh, sword fighting than you have. Uh, but even so, yeah, I spend about 30% of my time practicing with my non-dominant hand and I still get my ass kicked using this hand fighting against people who've only been training for a few months. It's really, really difficult to fight with your non-dominant hand unless you're ambidextrous or you've spent an insane amount of time practicing. So, yeah, telling people to just switch hands all the time probably isn't a good idea. Okay, so everybody's seen that we released the wedge video. You're not famous, you arrogant prick. Get is is dead. Lovely Val, she's going to be working against me with different types of swings as if she had um, also had a sword. And I'm going to show you how the wedge works with it. So I want you just to swing down um, towards me this way. But you can see that instead of doing this, swing it down and just swing it straight. Instead of doing this, this is not realistic. This is realistic. You can see right here that as it comes down, come around this way, okay, just move it down towards me. Every time he was showing his realistic technique, he was getting his fingers cut off, the blade was sliding down and hitting him in the, hitting him in the bloody fingers. 
how many extra chromosomes do you need to not realise that that's not a good way to fight? Bloody hell. Uh, what's he going to do then? Hold it with just the thumb and use that for his pendulum and his point of rotation? Bloody hell. I really feel sorry for anybody stupid enough to give him money to teach him how to fight sword, hand to hand, or anything for that matter. The final time, he even gets hit in the shoulder as well. I guess he'd just say, you don't need your side dealt, you just swing the body and use the arms as pendulums. That's where it's going to move. Do it again. As it comes down, I can continue riding it down if I want to. Swing it through. So I'm going to be using the wedge to accomplish tasks. 120th speed and he's still getting so much wrong I hardly know where to start. So first off you don't need to like nicely line up the opponent's uh, tip of the opponent's blade to within an inch of your own to gently move it aside. You know, hold it at an angle you can be off by a foot or possibly even more and still very nicely deflect it. He's still getting his hand hit at that slow speed. He gets he puts the wrong edge on when trying to when trying to counter and it's a really slow inefficient counter anyway from there just thrust in or cut or cut to the leg it's really not difficult so I want you to swing it from the side like this it's the same movement Ducking down like that, falling at free full speed, it's going to take you about 0.3 of a second. That's the physically the fastest you can possibly do it. It's not taking in reaction time or anything like that. It's as fast as the laws of physics are going to allow you to duck like that. That takes less than 0.3 of a second. That technique is not going to work. That be my point instead of going and hitting her. Did anyone else notice the fear on her face as he was trying to demonstrate those techniques? Okay, so now we're going to look at with two hands, if two hands, like a two-handed weapon, like a broadsword or something like that, or just... Broadsword. Longsword. Regular stick's coming, so I want you to just kind of swing it over. It's the same thing that as it comes over, you're moving towards it. Um, might look alright in slow motion, but a mousy little movement like that isn't going to do anything against a longsword when someone's uh, coming in, stepping through, and slashing down. It's just not going to work. You're talking about a five, six, seven pound piece of metal being levered forward hard with two hands. That is not going to do it. Even when you have got really good solid structure in there, and you're hitting with the, uh, and you're blocking with the strong of the blade, even then sometimes a longsword can manage to plow through the guard. So I'm sorry, that just isn't going to work. Sometimes it makes more sense. This wedge, I'd have to wedge it so far out that I'm so far across the body that I've kind of lost my ability to strike with the sword so as it comes down now, yeah inside block here with the uh, opponent sword there you haven't lost any ability that's a really nice position to be in and thrust in like that uh, cut across like that so I don't know if that's too far for the camera but yeah you're gonna have to do that and you can cut round to the leg you could step forward and grab the arm if you're quick enough, and then do stuff from there. So loads you can do from that position. Straight out to me. Okay, now if you stay in the same position, it should go, come across, here, there. Alright, now do it again. Slowly, bringing it through there. That's what I'm going to do, okay? <laughs> Even the girls are laughing at how ridiculous that technique is. It's going to be swinging it to the side, and this is a learning drill that you can use. So as you swing it to the side, 
as it comes through, you're going to catch around, okay? And it leaves her back here and it leaves my arms free to do what they need to do. And if you slap someone's sword as it's coming across to, and they're not hard enough for it to fire back like that, you're just going to bring it back underneath or bring it back over the top far before you're actually going to be able to close in and do anything. Now, possibly as it's coming across, you might be able to push it as you're closing, but it's still a very, very risky move, which I wouldn't recommend. But, okay, swing it straight down. I didn't know you were filming that. All right, bring it straight down. Okay, we're gonna use the same thing, but with our arms, okay? We're gonna use this movement that we've developed with the sword. And as the sword comes down, come down. That's where we're going to work. Bramek, please try that move at full speed with a sharp sword. Everybody else, don't do that. All right, now let's say that I get on the outside. Come in. Here. That's the inside. And then I'm going to be working. I'm simply, I'm not doing this. Bring it down on me. A little fast. And that, that's not working. That's going to damage the blades and it's going to shatter them. As long as they aren't completely shit, it's not going to shatter the sword or the knife. It's going to give some minor damage, but who cares? It's far more important to not have your head split in half than it is to have your sword undamaged. Now, that being said, knives against swords aren't particularly great for uh, parrying you are in a very, very risky situation. And the Shashka is a very good implement for that type of efficiency. But you can also use it with your hands. So one of the things I want you to look at is, is your hands as swords, and imagine them as daggers and swords, and use everything that we've learned, all these movements and all these different things. <laughs> Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it.